Have you ever done the opposite of what your parents advised? Have your parents ever broke a promise to you or even your siblings? I'd say everyone would more than likely answer yes to both of these questions. In today's episode, we explore the connection between a child's rebellion and a perfect father's fulfilled promise. Speaking of connection, my exceptional kingdom colleague, Sakira Baez, left this incredible five-star review entitled Connected Community. It says, I feel like I am sitting in her home and a part of her community while she offers the lens of God on the mess of motherhood. So blessed to have a voice of reason to tune into that confirms my identity in Christ. Yes, yes, and yes, Sakira, anytime we are gathered together, it is an amazing Christ-centered experience. Thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for this review, you mighty, mighty woman of God. These reviews help encourage myself, they testify to future listeners, and they position you to be featured in our weekly newsletter and a future episode of the podcast. Head over to iTunes and leave your very own review because I would love for you to be the next feature. For today, let's dive into rebellion and what it's really costing us. Hey, hey, Mama. Welcome back to the Treasured Mama podcast. I'm Corey Messer, a Kingdom Life Coach and Messy Mompreneur, and I want to know if you're like me. Have you ever felt like you've lost yourself in all the things, or perhaps you just need some encouragement on this messy journey of authentic motherhood? In this space, we love sharing routines, rhythms, and real stories of real moms as we declutter our heads, our hearts, and our homes to discover clarity and confidence. If you're ready to gain clarity on who God designed you to be, create simple systems for a more peaceful household, and connect with other mamas doing the same, this podcast is right up your alley. My prayer is this episode will encourage you. So grab a drink, take a mommy moment, and listen in to today's goodness. I am so happy to be back here with you again for another episode. Coach Corey here. We are continuing our exploration of the Bible being a phenomenal love story, how love is woven all throughout the Bible. Two episodes ago, we started discussing creation and God's extravagant love for us as his most prized creation and treasured possession. And then the last episode, we talked all about the fall where sin enters the equation and the father's love and how even when we reject his perfect love, he still does not reject us. Which leads us into today's conversation. We will be spending some time in Isaiah and Matthew primarily, and we're talking about the rebellious son as well as a promise that is fulfilled. It's really fascinating when we continue to look at the narrative of love and love in all the ways it is visited and explored in scripture because there's this common theme of how God's love does not change based on our behavior. He can be disappointed in our behavior and that still doesn't negate his love for us at all. And it really speaks to his perfect love, that agape love. Let's go back into the story of the Israelites because they began to follow along in sinful ways that were a part of their lineage being descendants of Adam and Eve. If we continue with the story, the Lord eventually rescues Israel from Egypt and Moses was the one that was running that charge. God ultimately led them to the promised land at the height of their glory. During the reign of King David, the nation became rebellious again. One of the ways that they began to do this is to worship false gods. Let's pause here for a moment because many of us think of false gods as being a sacred cow or a golden altar or statues or money, but a false god is anything you are prioritizing above the Lord. You are making it a god in your life, lowercase g. 
You are making it an idol. You are prioritizing it above the Father. And when we are looking into this story, we see that their rebellion oftentimes was rooted in the worship of false gods. They would bow down to idols. Some people will refer to idols as being a false god. Other people will refer to false gods as being idols. I tend to think of them as separate, but within the same context. So you can fill that in for yourself. The bottom line is, if we are idolizing anything in our life, and we are prioritizing it above the Father, that is disobedient. That is out of line. That is in rebellion to the Father, which would make us a rebellious son or daughter. And because they did this, God sent the prophets to counsel with them. He gave them a word and they went to go deliver that so that they could warn the people and say, hey, if you continue with this rebellious behavior, this is what's going to happen. And God reveals a thing first through his prophets. And the Israelites did not heed the advice. They did not take the warning. In fact, they completely disregarded the warnings and they just continued with their same sinful ways. God being a just God, one who is righteous, he is not able to step out of being righteous because it is who he is. His character is consistent. He follows through on his promise. He implements a judgment and the Babylonians conquered their city and held them in exile for 70 years. Ask yourself the question, what is the real cost conversation for a quick fix? If you are somebody who is rebelling against something that you know, that you know, that you know God has called you to do, sit down and explore what is the real cost conversation. A situational moment of disobedience may cost you something much greater in consequences down the road. And is it really worth it? Do you really want to separate yourself from God through sin so you can have a temporary fleeting moment of gratification? Or do you want to surrender to God so you can have that eternal experience with him? What is the real cost conversation and is it worth it? I can tell you being in exile for 70 years is something I am not interested in. And just like Adam and Eve back in the garden were cast out of that delightful place of dwelling, Israel was exiled and cast out of the promised land that God provided for them. Why do we separate ourselves from the most beautiful thing that is available to us? And for so many of us, that beautiful thing is somehow attached to relationship with the Lord. And it's because we give into the lies of the enemy. It comes down to an identity conversation. As a son and daughter of the one true king, the enemy does not want you to live in that identity. So be aware of that. Be cognizant of that. And know that when God gives you a good and beautiful gift, he gives it to you. He delights in delivering that to you. God has prepared it for you. And I'm specifically talking about relationship with him. I see so often sons and daughters showing up in life where they are dismissing the beautiful gifts God has given them because they feel unworthy and they self-sabotage. The Israelites sought their fulfillment in things apart from the Lord. So this is where they separated themselves from God through sin. They had every opportunity to be totally in alignment with him, and they chose sin over their Savior. When they chose these things that were out of alignment with the Father, it led them to turning away from God. And he loved them so deeply. And they decided to not just separate themselves from their Savior, but they became enslaved to sin as a result. And that is the consequence I mentioned earlier when you ask yourself, what is the real cost conversation? Because consequences lead us in our own form of spiritual exile. Again, we get to remember that sin separates us from God. 
And when we indulge in sin, we release or forfeit, we give up our relationship with him. Beloved, it is time that we start taking responsibility for these choices we are making instead of blaming them on the enemy. He doesn't have access to us unless we give it to him by partnering with sin. Sin separates us from God. And when we indulge in sin, we forfeit our relationship with God. In the comfort and security of God's love, that is where all meaning and purpose for life is found. He knows the depths of our hearts, and God fulfills our every single need. So the question becomes then, why do we ever separate ourselves from Him? Specific to Israel, when they rejected God's love, it eventually brought them to their own punishment. God never forgot them even when they were disobedient. God delivered his people from Egypt, and he promised to bring full deliverance through his son, Jesus Christ. And this brings us to the fulfilled promise, the promise that was fulfilled. This is where we dive into Matthew chapter 2. When the time came for the promised Messiah, who was Jesus Christ, to be born hundreds of years later, the news reached the current king, King Herod. King Herod was an interesting man, to say the least, and he did not want anyone claiming to be king. He didn't want anyone contending for his position in the throne. He set out to find this, quote, proclaimed Messiah, end quote, for himself because he was so threatened by anyone potentially taking his spot. He had the audacity to order every male child under the age of two in Bethlehem be killed. With the newborn son of God as King Herod's target, God had other plans, and God even appeared to Joseph in a dream. I find that so beautiful. God will speak to us in the way that we are prepared to receive from him. This is why some people get visions. Some people really dive into the physical word and they get great depth by doing word studies. Some people see visuals in the natural world. Some people hear songs. God will speak to you through any modality that you are prepared to hear him. When he appeared to Joseph in this dream, he told him, get up, take the child and his mother to Egypt until it is safe to leave and I will tell you when it is safe. So that's what Mary and Joseph did. They went to Egypt and it seems that history is repeating itself, doesn't it? As the family is headed towards Egypt for refuge. In the gospel of Matthew, Matthew draws our attention to how significant this journey is. And he does this by referencing the Old Testament passage in Hosea, which says, so he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and escaped to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod's death so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt, I called my son. And that is in Matthew chapter two, verses 14 and 15. We see that Matthew uses this reference to identify Jesus as the fulfillment of bringing God's people out of Egypt. His loving plan of redemption for them. I find it incredible how God's love is so deep and so wide simultaneously. Jesus traveled to and from Egypt. He passed through the waters to be affirmed as God's beloved son. He even went into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan, and yet he did not sin because he is perfect. Jesus followed the same path as Israel, but he remained righteous and faithful in every single way that Israel failed. Just because something has always been a certain way doesn't mean it always has to be that way. Just because you've only ever seen parents be modeled in a certain kind of way doesn't mean that is how our good, good father is. His love is agape love. His love is deep. It is wide. It is pure. It is perfect. And his character is consistent. This is why we see the Old Testament speaking towards things that will be fulfilled in the New Testament because God honors his promises. Nothing is going to stop the fulfillment of his promise. 
and this is so representative in the physical man of Jesus, again, who followed the same path as Israel, and yet he remained righteous and faithful, even in every way that Israel failed. Because of God's love for us, Jesus answered the call to live a life in right standing with God and bear the wrath and judgment of God that Israel deserved. It's such a deep love. It's so expansive. It's beautiful because I may relate to a certain attribute of God. I may really respond to a story or an example in scripture. And yet that may not really resonate with you. However, the next story that is shared may deeply resonate with you. And again, this goes back to the point that God will speak to us in the way we are prepared to hear. His word is living and active. So just because you haven't had a deep, intimate connection with the word of God before, I want to encourage you now that you know that you can look at the Bible through the lens of learning more about who Jesus is, I encourage you to re-explore certain areas of the Bible that you haven't before and seek out opportunities to find how love is demonstrated, to learn about the character of God, to see where God has fulfilled his promises, even when his children have been disobedient and even rejected his perfect love. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your pure, potent love. God, we thank you so much for seeing us as who you designed us to be versus how we may have been showing up. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us this incredible book, this incredible word that is inerrant. It is perfect, God, for you to show us everything that you need us to know. And God, I pray that whoever is listening to this podcast, God, that it would just speak to their heart in precisely the way that they are prepared to listen so that they get to know you, God. And it stirs up some curiosity for them to go grab a Bible, to go look online and uncover, discover, and possibly rediscover who you are, the love you have to offer, and even be brave enough to uncover the treasure that you have placed within him or her. Mostly, we thank you for your presence, God. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, Mama, one quick thing before you go. If this podcast blessed you in some way, the number one way you can pay it forward is to head over to iTunes, Treasured Mama Podcast, and leave a review and subscribe to the channel.